these are all the materials that I got from the melting tin video. This is some of the shot, and this is the piece that I melted on the graphite block that still has the permanent marker on it. And this is the piece that I melted on the griddle that picked up some of the rust and gave it that golden color. And this is the rest of the shot. Well, that was dumb. I dropped them in there too fast and cracked the beaker. I am 303. Thank you for watching. Warning. The acids that I'll be working with are highly corrosive and their fumes are dangerous. Protect yourself. So we're going to start off by trying to dissolve this tin shot in hydrochloric acid. This is a two molar solution of hydrochloric acid and we're going to start off with about 80 milliliters. Tin is supposed to dissolve in concentrated hydrochloric acid. Two molar hydrochloric acid is by far not the strongest. You can see some reactions started here, but it wasn't fast enough, so I switched it to the super scientific hot plate. And now it's in the 500 milliliter beaker after I realized I cracked the other one. It's starting to get hot here, and most of the fumes that are coming off are mostly water vapor. They may contain a little bit of chlorine gas, but not much because the temperature is pretty low. I really don't want the chlorine to escape in a gas form because I want it to stay in the solution and combine with the tin that's getting dissolved. The goal of this part is to make Stannous Chloride, or SNCl2. So at this point it looks like there's a pretty good reaction starting. Now, I've made Stannous Chloride before when I wanted to use it to test gold solution and see if all the gold had precipitated out or not. But for that, I only needed about 5 grams of tin, and I could let it sit for a few days to get completely dissolved into the hydrochloric acid. You can see here that there's a lot of smaller hydrogen bubbles coming off of the tin pieces, indicating that the tin and the hydrogen are changing place to create stannous chloride. The larger bubbles are oxygen from the water being boiled. And at this point, it's going really fast, and the temperature is really high, so I'm going to have to reduce the temperature again. But this kind of looks cool. I don't think I mentioned it before, but this shot was weighed out to just over one troy ounce. And at this point, I decided I would try hydrogen peroxide to see if it would speed up the process and help the tin dissolve. And I'm going to try adding about 50 milliliters. After a little while, it did look like the reaction was continuing to do pretty well. And maybe the hydrogen peroxide helped. I did notice there were some things floating around in there. And really it looks like the tin may have oxidized and turned black. I can't really tell if it improved the speed any at all. A little while later, it started to turn this gray color, and then it turned like a milky white color. And this was really interesting. It formed some kind of crystals on the top, but they were very small and very thin and very short-lived. I don't know if they were stannous chloride crystals or something else. And then the solution turned gray again. So I think what I'll do at this point is put this away for the night and let it settle out and start over tomorrow. And here we are the next day. Although I'm not 100% sure, I think that white substance may be lead chloride. But we can talk about that later because for now we're going to pour what is hopefully mostly stannous chloride into this Pyrex baking dish and set up a tin cell. There's another look at the precipitate and these are the undissolved pieces that now look really black. So my negatives hooked up to the black and that's going to be the cathode. And I'm going to try this nickel strip here to see if I can get the tin to plate up or maybe crystallize on this piece of nickel. And for the positive on the red side, the anode, I'm going to use the piece of tin that I melted on the graphite block. That's why I was trying to get it kind of flat. I'm going to add a little bit of distilled water 
to give it a little bit more volume. I'm trying here to get them both set up so that the metal is in the solution, but the alligator clips are far enough away so they won't corrode too badly. And we'll turn the power on. So right away, I noticed that there was a lot of bubbling, a lot of activity on the cathode and the nickel electrode. On the anode side, the most noticeable thing was that it changed from silvery color to a black color. Here I have the amperage turned way down, but I'm still not happy with the nickel strip. It looks like the hydrochloric acid is eating the nickel faster than the tin can plate out on it. So I'm going to switch the cathode from the nickel strip to a copper wire. If nothing else, the copper wire will be more resistant to the hydrochloric acid and maybe we can get some good tin growth on it. Honestly, at this point, I really don't know what to expect, but I'm pretty sure that my Stannis chloride solution is not that pure. So I'm not really expecting great tin crystal growth right from the start. If you watched my tin melting video, you know that the source of the tin was from some guy off eBay and he only claimed the tin to be 96% pure. So all I have is his word that it's 96% pure. So here you can see that there is a gray formation on the copper wire. It looks like the copper wire is holding up okay. And if you notice the anode, is starting to get a whitish yellowish growth on it that is flaking off and what's underneath is black. I tested the pH to see if it was still acidic and that's probably about a two or a three so it's still acidic but not super acidic. And now that we've had the cell running for a little while you can see that there is a spongy gray growth on the copper wire cathode. So my hope here is that that is relatively pure tin coming out of the solution and onto the copper wire. So I'm going to try to harvest it periodically and put it in this distilled water here. While we have the cell running, I thought I would put a little bit of sulfuric acid on the undissolved tin pieces just to see what would happen. So it's getting late and I'm probably going to start breaking this down soon since I'm outside. But that's really interesting, the side of that, how it looks like it's split open and the tin on the inside's black. It's times like these I wish I had an indoor space so I could let this run overnight. But anyway, here's the next day. This is the electrolyte solution after it had settled for about 16 hours. And this is all of the mossy spongy tin substance that we collected and now it's pretty much all dry and these are the pieces that were soaking in sulfuric acid the sulfuric acid really didn't do much but i think it dissolved some i actually thought this was pretty cool this was the copper cathode and it looks like that underneath all of the sponginess and mossiness it actually plated the copper cathode pretty well i'm actually pretty happy about that so I took the electrolyte solution and decanted off the top and you can see it's pretty clear and that should be stannous chloride. And this is everything that was on the bottom. It's obviously dark, not really sure what's in it. So I thought that since I had this really clear solution of what I thought was stannous chloride, that I would rehook up the power supply and the cell and try to see what would happen in a small beaker. I didn't have time to do a full setup, so I thought I would try a smaller scale just to kind of see what would happen. So I had the power supply set a lot lower this time because I thought that maybe a slow growth would provide a better product. And in looking at it, it may have been a little bit improved, but for the most part, it looked like the same mossy tin that I had been growing so far. Since the results were about the same, I thought I'd end this test and start over the next day with a slightly different approach. 
So the next day, I thought I would try some salt. And this is just standard table salt, sodium chloride, with no iodine. If you do electrolysis on plain salt water with neutral electrodes, you usually wind up producing chlorine that escapes as a gas and sodium hydroxide. But since our anode is going to be the same tin piece that we used before, it should generate some stannous chloride that will take the tin over to the cathode and play it out on our copper wire. And we'll start out running this thing with a pretty high voltage. I thought it was fun to watch with it being clear like this because you can actually see the current that's created by the electricity going through the water. I just always think that's really interesting. I think the reason why I'm not growing really pure tin crystals is because of the fact that I'm using the anode that's not pure tin. If you start off with a pure tin anode and pure stannous chloride as your electrolyte, all you have to do is hook up a cathode that's neutral or tin and hook up the power and instantly you have beautiful pure tin crystals. What I'm hoping to do is get there eventually working with what I have, starting with this 96% piece of tin that I bought off eBay instead of starting with everything pure. I don't think that the tin crystals that I'm going to grow are going to be that much better than anybody else's, but just going through the steps and not starting with everything pure, I'll appreciate it more and hopefully you will too. And now here I'm running at a lower voltage so you can see there's not as much activity at the cathode. I thought this was really interesting. The bubble that was in the piece of tin has completely been eroded by this process. Also, I added a second cathode here to give it more surface area. Okay, so to me, this feels like winning a battle. It's a small victory, and it's not winning the war, but it's definitely a victory. So, you can see here that amongst the mossy tin that we've been growing, it appears that we are growing what look like good, pure tin crystals. So, this is a while later, and really not much had changed. It's still growing sporadic pure tin crystals, but it's also still growing the mossy tin. So I think until I get things more pure, that's going to continue to happen. So I think I'll wrap this one up here and do a follow-up soon. The end.